हेलो फ्रेंड्स वंस अगेन आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल प्रोफेसर इकबाल ताजवाले इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट पोएम्स ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर दैट इज द चिमनी स्वीपर व्हिच इज रिटन बाय इंग्लिश पोएट विलियम ब्लैक एंड वी ऑल नो हिम ओके वी ऑल नो हिम बिकॉज ही इज वेरी फेमस फॉर हिज सॉन्ग टाइगर टाइगर ओके ही इज वेरी टाइगर टाइगर इज वेरी फेमस एंड वी नो हिम Uh, in this poem, we are going to discuss one of the important issues which is predominant in our society today. And what is that issue? We will discuss. Before we could go for the complete discussion of the poem, the chimney sweeper. Let us understand when was it published and in which parts it was published. The poem, the chimney sweeper, was published in the year 1789. The poem Chimney Sweeper was published in the year 1789, and afterwards it was also published in the second collection of poems. Okay, in the year 1794, 1794. First in the collection of poems Songs of Innocence, it was published by William Blake, and afterwards it was also published in his second edition of collection of poems, that is Songs of Experience, in the year 1794. now let us understand the main idea of the poem is child labor okay the main idea of the poem is child labor and exploitation of children children who are orphan who are suffering and the children who come from poor family the children who come from poor family and the chimney sweeper the very idea here the chimney is nothing but a large vertical panel okay a large vertical tube and out of which the soot comes okay okay the carbon dioxide or the tar which uh, is thrown out of it and generally we find the chimneys in big manufacturing units okay big manufacturing units he also says william blake he also says the source for chimney sweeper can be also found in french revolution and industrial revolution french revolution and industrial revolution and the main idea of this is to highlight the pathetic condition after industrial revolution which was predominant which was predominant in england during 18th century now let us go to the poem directly and study the poem study the poem okay the poem is divided into six stanzas the poem is divided into six stanzas and each stanza has four lines which we call a quatrain in english literature and here the narration is in the first person point of view the narrator is speaking as if he is experiencing all the situation okay now let us without further ado let us discuss the poem the chimney sweeper okay chimney sweeper written in the year 1789 the poem begins when my mother died i was very young and my father sold me while yet my tongue could scarcely cry we 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 so your chimneys i sweep and in suit i sleep okay the poem begins okay the poem begins where the young boy is telling other sell him soon after his mother's death only for some amount of money he was sold and he was forced to do the job of a sweeper okay then the next stanza what do we come to know in the next stanza see there is little tom dacker there is little tom dacker who cried when his head that curled like a lamb's back was shaved now here the narrator is telling the story of one of his friends one of his fellows one of his friends and the name of that friend is tom dacker he guessed the name dacker because he was working in the dacker's arm house he was working in the dacker's arm house and where the poor people are sold where the poor people are sold and this shows the poverty of the person okay there is little tom dacker who cried when his head that curled like a lamb's back was shaved so he started to cry this tom dacker he started to cry when his head was shaved like a lamb was shaved his head was shaved and that is shaved in order to avoid the consequences which he will face in the suit okay and then what the narrator does he he consoles see how the narrator consoles him now so i said here the narrator says hush tom 
Never mind it. Don't worry. It's nothing wrong. Never mind it. For when your head's bare, you know that the suit cannot spoil your white hair. So he says, don't worry. Suit will not damage you again. There will not be any effect of either the carbon dioxide or the suit, suit on his hair. Okay, there will not be any effect of the carbon dioxide or the suit on his head now. So even the lice cannot breed. Even the lice cannot breed. So here we can see the approach of poet convincing or consoling. Okay, he is consoling his friend. He is giving him strength. He is motivating him and he is telling that though your head is shaved, you will, you will be benefited for that. Okay, though your head is shaved, you are saved from the suit, from the carbon dioxide and from the tar you are saved. And then what happens in the next stanza? Let us go. And so he was quiet. Now after uh, the narrator consoles him, he was quiet. Now he was quiet. He was not crying. That very night, as Tom was sleeping, he had such a sight. Okay, it is told to us the same night when this boy, the Tom Taker, he was sleeping. Okay, he was sleeping. He had a nightmare. He had a dream. And what he can see in the dream, see, what he sees in the dream, had in the dream is that thousands of sweepers, Dick, Joe, Ned and Jack, were all of them locked in the coffins of black. So what he could see in his dream, what he, what he had in his dream is thousands of sweepers like him, namely Dick, Joe, Ned and Jack, where, okay, they were, they were locked up in the black coffin. That is nothing but a nightmare for him. That is something which is very horrifying for him to witness. Just imagine, just imagine a child who is of five to six years old he is trying to have such a dream which signifies horror and trouble going to come. Which signifies that horror and trouble is going to arrive. Horror and trouble which is going to arrive soon. And then what happens after that you can see in the next stanza, stanza number four, what happens? And by came an angel who had a bright key. And it is told in the fourth stanza that his vision is completed now, his dream is finished now and there arrives in his dream, there only what happens in he, when he had a dream, there arrived an angel with keys, okay, with keys and he opened the coffins. What happened? The angel, the angel opens the coffins and set them all free. Okay, the angel set them free. Now they are free from the burden, they are free from the force. Now they got the freedom, they can do whatever they please and whatever they want. Then down the green plain, now these boys are said, said to go, said to move around the meadows, green meadows. Now they can leap, they can jump, laughing them, laughing they run and now they are happy. Okay, now they are happy, they are running fast. Then down a green plain, leaping and laughing, they run. So they are so happy. They are so happy that we can see that when they were running, that laughter was present on their face. When they were running, they were very happy and wash in a river and shine in the sun. So they are, they are set free in the meadow, green meadows. They are playing now in the water and soon after having finished their play, they are getting themselves dry in the sun. Now they can do whatever they want. It is told in the fourth stanza where the dream of Tom Decker gets finished here. His vision gets over here. And then we are taken to the next stanza. That is the fifth stanza of the poem. They necked in white. Now they are free from any burden of work. Here necked means they have kept their bags away. Okay, they are white because they have dried themselves in the water, in the water of the river all their bags left behind so they have left all the worries all the worries of job they have left behind and they rise upon clouds now what they do they are they rise upon clouds and sport in the wind they are riding the clouds and they are playing in the wind they are riding the clouds now and they are playing in the wind and the angel told tom and the angel told tom if he would be a good boy, 
he would have God for his father and never want joy. The angel here tells Tom, if you are a good boy, then you, then you will have God for your father and there will be happiness forever in your life. Then there will be happiness forever in your life. Means you will have a father who will take care of you and you will not suffer a lot. You will not suffer a lot in your future. In your future. So this is the fifth stanza where we come to know about what Tom Dicker's life. And then what happens in the sixth stanza? What happens in the sixth stanza? We will see. And so Tom awoke and we rose in the dark and his dream is finished now. He awoke from his dream and what he can see is now darkness everywhere and God with our bags and brushes to work. Now he is getting ready to go and to do the same job again. Though the morning was cold, though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. Okay, now he he has some hopes and he knows. Okay, if he deeds he will definitely be benefited. Now, he, the though the morning was cold, now the ray of hope is there with Tom. He says, though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. He is convinced and had some inspiration. What was that? So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. Okay, the last line which is very symbolic in its meaning. So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. This shows that the teachings of church, if you suffer a lot in the present life, you will get reward in the next life. You will be rewarded in the next life, which is the teaching, which is our karma we say. We have heard this from people saying, if you work hard, if you do your deeds honestly, you will get a better life in the future. That is what it is taught to us. But this is what William Blake wants to criticize. Because of this reason, number of people in England, they were made servants. They were made to suffer from child labor, which was predominant, particularly in the 18th century. His very idea is to get rid of the child labor, exploitation of children, not only child labor, but also exploitation of children, which was very dominant in England in 18th century. Okay, the chimney sweeper particularly focuses on the very idea of how the children of five to six years of age were employed by the manufacturing companies because their size, okay, the size of their body was an advantage for the manufacturing companies because they can simply enter into the chimneys and they can clean the suit. They can clean the dark, dark suit which was there in the chimneys. So this was an effort from my side guys. If you really like this video, please comment, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Professor Iqbal Tajwale.